Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend fat? Check it, check it, check it. It's Unique Hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, none, you know, my dad walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. I want y'all to like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. When I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But we're also on Patreon. That's where you're going to see our full-length interviews and on our YouTube membership. For those who don't love our clips, because you know we give y'all a lot of clips. Y'all want to see the interview before you see the clips? Just go ahead and subscribe, sign up, support the brand. And we man, thank you. check it, man. Hey, listen, man. Um, make sure you do what she said. I'm gonna <laughs> shut this whole down. I'm not playing. I'm, I, I've been coming up here. Uh, I've been trying to do y'all right. I'm gonna go to shorts. I ain't even gonna do clips no more. <laughs> I'm tired, man. I need y'all to keep on taking the side and pushing this channel up. I know. So we can take it all the way to the top, man. Hey, man, listen, man, we got a guy here today, y'all. He don't need no introduction. This guy right here, man, is a legend, man, in the city when it come down to, hey, man, the music, uh, dealing with the community, uh, being a, a guy that just pretty much uh, knows how to, you know, transition in time, you know what I mean? Real transparent guy, man. That guy, Boleg, is in the building. What's going on? What's going on? E Boss Talk, man. Boleg in the building, Stampede Records for Life. You know what I'm saying? It's about to go down full Lint, everything you want to know, hey man, let's get it. Man, hey man, listen man, I don't know if you've been watching Boss Talk 101, man, but we be on it, man. I, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, man, we gotta, we gotta get all the way down in your business. Really, they say I'm the messy one, but really my wife is the nosy one. So at the end of the day, she gonna be asking you all kind of questions. You'll be like, man, I ain't even, what? I ain't, <laughs> gonna, I ain't know we gonna talk about that. Uh, let's go, let's get to it. Okay, so you're born and raised in Oak Cliff, of course, right? To be exact. To be exact. And I got to tell you, thank you. I want to say thank you. Let me start off first. Because that's the only song I know for Oak Cliff, okay? <laughs> and I love that song when he told me you were the one who did. I think he would play part in that Oak Cliff, That's My Hood. Yeah, so what happened was, it's you no know, true story. And I try to get everybody's story the right way. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Um, Young Nino High Boy Star, Lil Sock, originally had the song. Um, they come around some kind of way they couldn't get it on the radio and Lil Sock reached out to me and he said man put a verse on this Oak Cliff that's my hood so I went and watched them perform the song bro and I tell you it was off the roof it was out the roof like I'm talking about everybody in the place was saying and I was like whoa but when he brought it to me whatever I sat in the house I wrote the 20 I put 20 24 bars on it whatever I went to the studio recorded it Looped the, looped the beat or whatever, and, and you know I got it back to him or whatever. But what, what I did was I recorded at K one hundred four. So while I was there, I actually walked in and had them to play it right there, and they was like, "Whoa!" So it come back around. They didn't actually play it on the air, but it's like how we sitting there, they play the the music in house. Right. Um, the actual guy who was one of the first guys to break the record was uh. Uh, Bobo Luciano. Mm. Bobo, that's my boy, yeah. super tight. So, uh, yeah, no doubt. Um, shout out to Bobo. So, um, I sent a record over there to Bobo. Some kind of way, I got wind back that he didn't want to play the record or he broke the record or something. Yeah, happened. I seen him say that on y'all interview. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I called him. I was like, hey, bro, hey, can you spin that record? Oh, Cliff, that's my hood for my little homie, him and me, you know what I'm saying? And we talked about it. He spent the record. So, Again, Bobo, one, one of the, the first, first one people played it. to play the record. You know what I'm saying? But Lil Sock is excellent. Rest in peace, Lil Sock. You know he he, he passed away, but um, and Free Hot Boss Star. But um, that's how the record actually came about. Okay, wow. let me ask you something. Because that hold on, because for that song, everybody, no matter if they didn't know Texas, they know Old Cliff, and everybody be singing that song like it's yeah. their hood, and yeah, it ain't no their hood. Nah, it ain't that I want to. I, I want. I, I want to break the verse down that you that you put on there. Like, tell, let's let's for, word for word if you can remember it. I was like, beat to the O when I wrecked the mic. A lot of y'all niggas don't want to fight. You want to jump a nigga, stomp a nigga. Oak Cliff niggas will hood niggas. Off top, we don't play, boy. Fuck around and get dropped, boy. Beating up your block, boy. Any can of toy that's hitting hard. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, 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 ooh. SS and grip the grain to my wrist, brain uncut like cocaine. Oak Cliff, that's what that is. You bitch niggas, y'all best to chill. Fuck with us, get your head peeled. Sip a drink by the, you know what I'm saying? Like, Man. It's on and on and on, but you know what I'm saying? It's just how I just start, while I was writing it, it was like I'm looking at like what Oak Cliff really is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's like, what I thought. We'll get out there, you know what I'm saying? This is what we do in Oak Cliff. Like, we go get us some money. 
You know what I'm saying? We gonna have us some fun. We gonna drive whips. We go. Y'all wanna get it? Y'all wanna get into it with us anyway? We gonna get into it with y'all anyway? That's just you know that's. I mean, it's it's hard. Little business, you know what I'm saying? But isn't so that almost be. every city? I yeah, see so many is. guys sit right here and they talk about their city, and it's the same thing I hear. Yeah, it's the same, but it's the same thing. But uh, but if you notice, everybody want to be a, be a part of Oak Cliff, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. When you think about the songs that stand out, that's one of them. Uh, uh, Southside the Realist is yep. another one. Um, mm-hmm. uh, man, the Triple D is in me. That's yeah. that's that that the row in chief. Yeah, you know, like I got money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yours too. Yeah, I mean that, that yeah. I got money. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah like, like what? <laughs> we, uh, all right, we are gonna get into that. But before we get into music, I know I jumped. I know you I know jumped off. Jump you jumped off. Let me go I back. Know. I just wanted to talk about just to, to give kudos to that song. Oh, right, let me go down. back now. Okay, go so ahead, um, Oak Cliff, what was it like growing up in Oak Cliff for you? Were you raised by a single mom or your mom and dad? No, nah, my uh, I was raised by my grandmother in a, in a house anywhere from two bedroom house on High Street, um, anywhere from thirteen to sixteen people living in one in one house. I used to sleep on the floor. I didn't get a bed till I was in tenth, eleventh grade. Uh, while I moved with my cousin, he was a big time drug dealer, whatnot, whatever. But my teachers would pick me up from the solo and take me to Roosevelt and. Blah blah blah. Where's your parents? Where were your parents? Did you have siblings? Your yeah. siblings was in the house with you too. Yeah, my brother. How many I, have one, I have one brother. Just one brother. Um, older, younger. He older than me. Older than me. He got drafted to see out of Murray straight out of high school in baseball. Wow. But he ended up getting in trouble. Long story short, Dang. You know, decision wise. But my mother and father both was in and out of jail. My mom been on drugs since I was eight years old. It's something I still battle with right today. You know what I mean? Because so you remember seeing her not on where, drugs? Yeah, because one time, just um, like I knocked on the door and I walked in and I was knocking on the door, but she didn't answer. And I opened the door, or whatever, and I walked in. I seen little baggies on the little baggies on the on the TV thing or whatever. Um, so I leave out whatever. But as I got older, I got into the game. I understood what those what baggies was. was back then. So I just put it together that. You no, know, she's been on drugs since I was like eight years old. So a lot of my coaches helped me out throughout my life. You know, my uh, my family. Um, but you say you struggle with weight. that. So how did you struggle with that? What What about her addiction that you know um, you battled with? Because I want the the addiction. The battle for me with her is me cleaning her up. Like she wanted to live on the street. Like. I done try to get her in all kind of facilities for the last four or five years. Even now? Yeah, right now. She's right still now. on it right now? Yeah, right now she's still on wow. it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I walked up on her one time and, you know, she tried to walk away from me and I grabbed her and I'm like, when you gonna stop? But she don't want to stop. How she live is how she want to live. I mean, I done did everything under the sun to help her and she just don't want that help. Mm-hmm. She can't escape from where we from. She can't escape the environment. You know what I mean? Like, if I put her in a facility, like, she been to Turtle, she been to Green Oaks, I done had her everywhere. So at the end of the day, look up, she come back down the street with a bag. And I'm like, dang, man, they didn't keep her long enough. You know what I'm saying? But the only thing that when she go to jail, jail, like she go stay two, yeah, three she years. Yeah, she got to stay. She got to be she clean. She come back. She come back wearing 165, 175. Looking good. Looking real good. Now she probably weighing about, I don't know, maybe 100. Do you think she might, do you, do you think that like in cases like that, because I hear people say it all the time, whenever you come back and you come back clean, you got to move out of your environment and move somewhere totally different. Yeah, she has to, but if not, because she go, she revert back to the same thing. You right. know what I mean? Like, because I know I had her in a place for like 30 days and, you know, she was looking good and everything or whatever, cut her hair out. Uh, Cause I heard had I heard matted up in the last 10, 10 years. Like when I went to the feds, she was out here on her own. Honestly, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Not saying that people didn't help her, but I appreciate everybody who, who has did. and did help my mom because right. they knew that was my mom. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So you know, I mean, I respect people who help her, but at the same time, people hurt her by giving her what they gave her. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but then. Um you know, they always say the reason why people are how they are a lot of times, yes, she's addicted to it, but a lot of times people take that stuff to to hide the, to hide the hurt, to deal right. with the hurt. So have you ever found out what it is it that um, hurt her, why she even turned to it in the first place? No, I don't know why. I don't think that, well, I can't tell you why she turned to it in the first thing, in the first place, because I think it was just a, a, a drug that came and swept you know, everybody community by a storm at one mm-hmm. point, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I also feel like that she feel that she let me or my brother down in some way because I can see it on her all the time when she do talk to me or want to talk to me. You know, it's like like my brother in the, um, my brother in the state uh, doing time, like he got 15 years, he done did 10 on it. Mm. But um, she be like, I seen Elwood over here and over there. 
knowing she ain't see my brother. Like she tried to revisit like when my granny, when her mama died, which uh, she was incarcerated, and I used to go see my grandmother every single day. Like my grandfather died in December, then my granny died in June. Mm. So I knew it was gonna be hard for her because they've been together forever and a day since they right. was like, you know, 15 to 16 years old. So I always, you know, no matter if I came from the club at two in the morning, three, four, five, I always go see my granny before I go home or whatever. And she just died from natural causes, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But my mom feel like somebody it's suffocated her. her right. This or and that. Her fault yeah, or yeah it's, I mean, it, it be so much to it, but when it's really dysfunctional homes, you know what I'm saying, yeah. to be honest, you know? So and your day, dad, is he still living? No, my dad died in 2009 when I was in federal prison. Mm. So he, he died How did that me. affect you and what did he die from? Um, kidney failure. It yeah. affected me. Like, you know, I was one of those kids, like, I want my daddy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he ta I always taught me and my brother, like, that's how we learn how to play baseball. That's how we learn how to throw football because of the time that we did spend with him. That's good. That's he what did. He's, and he, he wasn't to, on drugs or nothing like that. Yeah, he was on drugs too, you know, at some point. Um, he tried out for the Texas Rangers in 1978, but he didn't make it. He got cut on the third cut. But at the end of the day, the athleticism is is is, is through our family. Right. So um, I remember shooting basketball with my dad at the point, you know, in South Dallas on Grand Street when they had Grand and One and Two over there. Mm -hmm. He actually sold drugs in apartments that was Grand One and Two. So um, at the end of the day, like I say, my daddy, he taught us how to play baseball and, you know, throw a football or whatnot, whatever. But at the end of the day, I, just, I see my daddy when I was – Eight, then I seen him again when I was 12, and I seen him again until I was a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. So he called me, he was like, son, what you got going on out there? I hear you doing this and that. What is Stampede? I'm like, Stampede Records. Dad, just come on home, I'm gonna show you whatever, you know, everything I got going on. I was like, how much time you got left? He was like, I got like four, five months left. I sent him a couple grand to make sure he was good till, till he got home he got to see home. what was going on. At wow. least you enjoyed it. At least you treasure the time that you spent with your father. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Like, Man. I mean, you know, I mean, I can't, I mean, I love Just my memories. mom and my dad, like, no matter the circumstances, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's why I come, at some point, they always, you know, people, they always hit you with the message, like, but that's your mama, but that's your mama, but that's your mama. But at the end of the day, they got to realize, too, when she ready, then she go stop. But until then, she not gonna stop. Well, let me, so, let you me, know, it's a lot I deal with. On I, that I've really been wanting to cut in on this whole conversation because it, it's a thing where you know, being in in the nineties, um, you know, cocaine crack uh, was a big thing. You know, yeah, no uh, huge and uh, so huge that it affected our communities in more ways than one. Like, like, how was it? How do you end up dealing with streets? Your uncle, you say you moved and your uncle was hustling, right? Yeah, my cousin. Oh, your cousin. Yeah. Um, but were you able to, did did it affect you in a way to where you just didn't want to deal with it or did you just, you didn't mess with her with Cause, Cause I had an auntie, she used to smoke and she was slick. Yeah. She always coming up with ways, she would never say she was getting it for herself. She always, her, her, her man or somebody trying to get it for her. She know, I, you know, I'm really not just trying yeah. to give it to her like that. Right. So how was it that you were maneuvering around or how did you look at things when you would see your mom in that situation but the streets pretty much calling your name? Well, it was more like, um, like you asked me about my cousin then, right? So I didn't have, I never had company coming to my house. No girls, no boys, no nothing because of, they might come in and dump money on the table and I count the money and write 350,000 on the little paper wake up in the morning, go to school. When they don't went to the club all night, they sleep, they wake up. It's a money count right there. You know what I'm saying? They know how much money it is. So at the end of the day, I knew I couldn't bring people around me in high school like that because they go be like- They gonna steal it They too. got money or they go, ain't no telling what mm -hmm. happened. So I never allowed people to come around my house when I stayed in DeSoto with my cousin. So, um, but you were saying how did I- Yeah, how did, you, how did you maneuver around it? And how did you, you know, cause for me- It was hard. Yeah. Let me tell you it was hard because like you saying, my mom, she a slickster, like she yeah. She'll see you and knowing you, like she know you, you my good home. Yeah, 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 yeah. They gonna play uh, it. Give me twenty dollars or ten dollars, and you'll give it to her on the strength of being my teacher yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Then you'll come around. She go hit you. She go hit her. Then she go hit me. And then here she is. She got her money. Now she got whatever she want to go. If she want to go get her some, you know, get her get her fix. She gonna get her fix. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it may be. Then you know, there it is. She got her some money for. For a couple of days, you know what I'm saying, but um, I, I've never, like, literally gave my mom crack. You feel what I'm saying? Never, never. 
But you were um you were on the streets. You were in the streets yeah, he's doing street your thing, thing right? Be. Yeah. Was okay. Doing, was he might, doing my thing? Yeah, you was doing Little your thing, younger? right? Yeah. Was I doing my thing? Yeah. <laughs> so so no my but my thing is Seeing that this is how that drug affects your mom, or drugs affect your mama, but you still went on the street and did that to other people's moms. Well, I understand where you're coming from with that, that question or that scenario because um, this one group of guys I normally, I mean, I, I deal with, we always have a personal talks. And one dude asked, did I feel, well, it was asking him, that it was, did I feel like it was a bad karma right. because of how my mama is like it eats me alive the way that my mama is, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So they they said from all the drugs that I sold, do like you know could this be a coma? And then to my answer to my Rick Lick, I'm like, when I was selling drugs, I was eight years exactly. old. How could it be coma for me? I was an innocent child, and my mom was on drugs. Now I get in the streets hustling, and I'm getting money, and then I go to jail and come back. And then this how it turned out. So now it's a coma. No, it's not mm -hmm. a coma because. An innocent child should never have to pay for nothing that their parents or anybody in their family do when it comes to drugs. So that scenario that, that was trying to be displayed was just, you know now, what I'm I would have never thought it was karma because, as, right. as you said, you know, you were a kid and she was doing it way before you even started doing what you're right. doing. But I was just thinking of the perspective of the people that you were now giving it to. That's somebody's mama, that's somebody's sister, whatever. But, you know, a lot of people, you know, just like you have some men out here go out here and treat women terribly, but they have a mama and sister that if somebody did it to their mama, they'll hurt them. Yeah, but see, so, to be honest with you, it's like um, me leaving college, coming back trying to get jobs, and it was always or uh, you don't have enough experience, or we're going with this person, that person. I mean, it's second nature. You got to survive. So actually, I just use it for survival, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to survive. I didn't use it to be flashy, you know what I'm saying? Like, no matter how much money I had or whatever I ran across, that wasn't the thing for me because I had enough money if I wanted to buy any kind of car the showroom floor, I can go get it. Okay. You know, but at the end of the day, it was more for me taking care of my people. How old were you when you got in trouble? Which time? The first time. Uh, by 21, I beat a, I beat a, I beat a drug case in 20, at the age of 21 when I left college. Okay. And then I end up. Uh, what 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 drug case did you beat? What did they jam? A drug you up? case. What did they jam you up at? Seven level on more sailors. My sailors they jammed Street. you up right there. Yeah, because my auntie, my one of my aunties on my daddy's side actually called the police. And said that her son, because they were looking for her son, that he might be with me. She described my car and everything, oh, wow. and told them that I might have guns, money, and drugs with me and whatever. So, um, <laughs> I end up putting it. I end up, you know, running across town to make a play, and coming back. You know, the, the, the golden rule is: if you're riding dirty, get to your destination, get back to your destination. Mm -hmm. You don't stop. Mm -hmm. I broke the golden rule. I stopped at Seven Eleven to give me a. Damn big bite, hot hot dog. Damn, <laughs> damn and, big bite. Yeah, and so you know what I'm saying. I pull up, and I look outside as I'm grabbing some chips, and I'm like, "Damn, why the police car keep circling around?" So now it's just some on my, it's some on my dome, like there's something going on. Yeah. Now I'm seeing two police cars, and so when I get back in the car, or which my homeboy was in the car, or uh, dude, name, or uh, his name was Dude. Um, so the, my nine millimeter is in between the console, and I got. I had a big head off inside the air conditioning yeah. vent, you know what I'm saying? So um, I probably got like 7,000 number or whatever, but anyway, I had, I had a niggas with my name on it. I had a niggas with my name and diamonds on it. And so um, the police, when I put my car in reverse, like all the police cars, like six police cars just swarm me out of nowhere from all sides of the gas station at 7 So I'm like, damn. So the only thing I did was I just dropped the clip and, and, and took the bullet out the chamber, you know what I'm saying? So um, they knocked on the one from a driver license. I, I was an asshole. I cracked the one that slid my ID <laughs> out of my, my insurance because I don't know who y'all looking for, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so uh, they was like, so where's your cousin? I'm like, what cousin? And it was like, Calvin Walker. I'm like, he ain't in this car. And so I was like, my name's Terrence. So they walked to the car, came back. So they was like, well, um, yo, ain't he called the police saying he might be with you? And I'm like, what? So <laughs> now they thinking that my homeboy could be him because they never asked him for no ID. Oh yeah, you know dude. Which, so why yeah, wouldn't they just ask dude. him to find out? I don't know. So they just they just went on it. They opened they opened they opened the car door. I just went on and got out. Now I just told my homeboy, just 
know what I'm saying? I said, bro, don't trip. You know what I'm saying? If they find, they find a the dope. I mean, it's mine. So when they found my gun, they was like, who gun? I'm like, that's my gun. You gave them permission to search your car? No. I didn't give them permission. I was they about to say, opened, they can't search they you without permission. The doors, they opened both of the doors and just, because I didn't want them, you know what I'm saying? Because I had I already had uh, bad run-ins with the police, like mm -hmm. literally, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't want it to go farther because I had a, I had a, a fifty four million dollar lawsuit on the Dallas Police Department at one point. Ooh, that's before this me. happened. No, it was this was after it, but this was it still how long after? It. it still led up to it. Okay, it still led up to it the same thing because it was the same police officers. Same police officers. Yeah, and so okay. um um anyway, so they find the gun or whatever. So they were like, "Well, we gonna take you to gun, take you to jail for a gun charge." I'm like, "All right, cool. Gun charges be five hundred dollars. You pay that five hundred. The case over with." Mm -hmm. And so um. So it was this little, it was this little gang unit guy. He had, he had, uh, he had green eyes, and he walked up to me. And he said, "You know I'm gonna find that dope, right?" I was like, "What are you talking about?" So this joker went in my car. He jumped upside down to look up under the dashboard and everything, and he went to shaking on my air vents, and they went open. Now one of them went open, and I'm like, "They're not gonna find a dope," you know what I'm saying? And then soon as he, I don't know what he did, but some kind of way, it's like he just popped that joker and it came and he opened it. And he pulled it out. He was like, we found it. And I was like, all right, it's mine. And you it, said that? Yeah, because my home, not for them, my home, but take a choice for mine, for right. something that's mine, that's mine. Everything right. in the car belonged to me. And I, I'm like, everything in the car mine, I don't got nothing to do with my homeboy. Mm -hmm. But that's where they fucked up it when we went to trial, because my homeboy was wanted for drugs. So my lawyer just flipped the script on him and asked him, why did they let him go and then let me go? Because he the one was wanted for the drugs. But I told so they never that, checked his ID or nothing? Nope, they just let him go. They didn't even take him to jail, they just let him go. Wow. They let him walk away. So And that's how you got off. Yeah, and that's how that's how that's how I end up being that's how I end up being mm. the case because my lawyer just used reverse psychology on them, asking them why they let him go and then let me go when y'all know he was wanted for guns and drugs. But y'all didn't even run his name or nothing. And then y'all had legal search and seizure. So yeah, it didn't all have, went away. You know what I'm saying? How long did you how long did you fight that case? Oh, about two years. Two Dang. years. That's yeah. about that's about the average time. It takes yeah. a long. Um okay, so you fight that case for two years. We walking on into okay, but why you fighting the case, you still out there in the streets doing your thing. Yeah, I'm playing I'm Yeah, playing. you ain't you ain't playing no games. You nah. got to go get it now. No, nah, it wasn't I had to go get it, you had to be careful going and go get it. That wasn't even the peak of my time anyway, like ninety seven 98, they want to pick up my yeah, time. Yeah, because you 22, 20, about yeah, 22. Yeah, because I, 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 I was playing some opera at this time, and I ended up breaking my neck at the World Halo. Damn. Yeah. So you were playing sports? Semi-pro football. And still in the streets? And in the streets, and still donate money to the City Crest Company, and my organization, my little league football organization, the team that I'm the president over now. Yes, I still was doing everything. And still put money behind Stampede Records, still doing everything. So yeah, I was doing all of that. So you like, didn't need to be in the streets? Nah, I did. Well, it's not saying I didn't need to be in the streets, but I was trying to figure out a way to get out, out. the street. Got you know it. what I'm saying? I really was like, you know, I, I was hustling, but this numerous things I tried, even for the record label, to the light boxes in the club, to clothes store, to have my, uh, this one guy, his name was uh, uh, Rick, he died. He shot the block bleeder video for us. Uh, we, we was doing, uh, we had footage on a lot of people, whatever. We was trying to do on the cone. There was a TV show that we was go that we was go take, or that we was, that we was about to do. I spent one hundred fifty thousand on that, but he ended up dying in the studio with an enlarged heart from uh, mm. from um, sniffing cocaine. And I didn't know that he that he, he did he it. You mm. know what I'm saying? And I had just gave him like forty thousand. They still found him with twenty five thousand in his pocket when they when they found him dead. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, I mean, it was it was a lot of stuff that I actually was trying to get away from, like. You no, know, because at one point I got tired. You know what I mean? Like when I was coaching little league football, me and my um, my son and his mom be driving uh, to Seagullville, and we'll be passing by Seagullville, um, the federal prison. And, and one day I was just crying, and my son was like, "Daddy, what's wrong?" I was like, "Junior, I just feel I'm be over there one day," and I end up being over there one day mm -hmm. because you know, you know, you you you, you can feel it coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But wow. it's it's like so, I was literally I was trying to get out. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. So you. What happened to, for you to bump your head the next time when you ended up, um, you got in trouble again, that you ended up going, this is the time when you went to the feds, right? Yeah. How long, you did eight years? No, I did nine years. Nine, nine years. years and, nine years and six months. What like was that. it? What was the deal with that? And how long after your first time did this happen? My first drug case I caught was 
by by ninety six. And when did this this other 2006, one? 10 years. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, wow. I had a I had a ten year run. Like, yeah, I had a ten year run easy. But what but, what happened on the oh, what caused you to get back into a jam? You know. Well, you you know the like the performance New Jack City. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my homeboy and them actually ran. Uh, these Jamaicans actually ran these apartments and they called them New Jack. I know they did it back in the days. Where was yeah. this at? South Dallas. Yeah, damn, you know, you know old, that, damn that old was, Fuji in him. I remember him. <laughs> they was running him. that. Jamaicans ran the whole Texas back then. No, nah, they ain't yeah. running now. He was just running now. Y'all but, don't do that stuff, please. But but I remember I remember him. But it was these two brothers. They uh, knew him though. They all was over yeah, there together. I, I knew all of them. I was yeah. just young. Yeah. Like that's why I say like with Elaine's food, I done ate every every piece of Jamaican food you name, I done ate it because they used to cook at my greenhouse house in the backyard. Oh, okay. Like all the time. So it ain't from the fish eye soup to so you everything. were in, you was I, helping them dudes. Uh, no, nah, no. Nah, so you're going too far now. Don't, <laughs> what, what, don't, what, don't tell me. What, don't what, what, tell me why was you were cooking at their house? That, I wasn't a, cooking at their oh, house. Oh, they were cooking at your house. Who's, I'm talking about food. We talking about Jamaican food, sir. Yeah, but uh, just tell me. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> tell me. What, not that. Me. I'm talking about far as they was close to you. Yeah, they was they was in our neighborhood because a, a few of the Jamaican guys were talking to women in our neighborhood. Yeah. So, as the age of me being a youngster, 12, 13, they in the neighborhood, you know, they coming through, they cooking, barbecuing, they do everything in the, in the neighborhood. You know, Jamaica Tony, uh, Goldie, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jamaica Danny, his brother uh, Biggs, rest in peace of Big E-Banks. Like, they was in our neighborhood just doing it, you know what Damn. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they were messing with the women in our neighborhood. Or even, like, my cousin, she talked to one of them. So. I mean, they right there, like yeah, they you know like what I'm family. So, so you yeah. saw all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw everything so, that you could so possibly name. How did, I, and so we're gonna go back to how how they end up jamming you up. Yeah, by. that's cool. It's oh, so well, um, they had these performance on uh, South Boulevard, South okay. Boulevard, on this kid, like this dude named Mike Mike. Michael B was you don't know him, he's from Arkansas somewhere. Okay. And the dude named B Love that's that did the R and B singing for Stampede Records. Okay. Okay. Um I don't know, some kind of way they was in uh they was in South Boulevard. The the Biggs guy, the the one Jamaican brother, he ran those apartments down there. And the other brother ran the ones on Atlanta, okay. Atlanta and Green. So um um I had to wait. I mean, I had all the work, the keys and whatever, half key, whatever. And inside these apartments, I see, literally I, I call myself being smart. Instead of me driving from Oak Cliff with all the with all the drugs to South Dallas, I just went and got an apartment inside those same apartments on Atlanta and Green, which my door number was two oh six across the walkway. So anyway, they had the apartments down the street on, on South Boulevard and um some kind of way I think they finna hit the apartments down there. The Mike Mike boy and B Love jump out the window and Mike Mike break his leg. Mm. Man. And they took him back up there. They found everything you can name under the sun up in there. So from AR-15s to Glocks, Rugas, 9 millimeters, and uh, half a key of crumbs, and bottles of syrup, Damn. pounds of weed, the breakdown, the books, the scales, and they found it all. And then, of course, they jam him, they jam him with it. So these two dudes go to the bells bombing to get Mike Mike out, which Biggs is one of them. They go up to, to David Wells' bell bum to get Mike Mike out. And when they get there, David tell him, I need 8,000 because he'll flight reason. Well, they only had 6,500. They leave and try to come back two days later and get him. When they get up there to come get him, David was like, well, just give me the 6,500. Y'all bring my 1,500 back. Now, granted, days before this, I just get a dude, Mike Mike, $350 to buy his daughter and them some school clothes for the program that they had. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, but so fast forward time back to them going to get him the second time. He say, "Bring me the money." They go up there with the sixty five hundred. When they run his name, he tell them the feds got a hold on him. Damn. Now when David tell them that that the feds got a hold on him, Mike might come out of nowhere one day. 
Like, like he just dropped out the sky. He right back in, the, right back in the mix. He working and doing everything else. And the first thing anybody think about is that he ran. Wait, 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 wait. It ain't the first thing that anybody think about. It's the first thing that those two guys didn't tell nobody. Mm. They went up there to go get him, and he told them that the feds got him. I know, but so he didn't why tell they didn't no. tell nobody? That is the biggest question that I still ain't. I mm -hmm. never asked neither one of them. Why y'all didn't tell nobody else that the feds, the feds got him? Got because on goodness. the streets, when the feds grab niggas, they gonna say, "Hey, yeah. bro, don't fool, man, such, don't such fool the feds got him. got him." He came right back into the. They, he came right back in working the houses, doing the same thing. He came right back in doing his, doing nobody his routine, knew. and nobody knew. But the two dudes that knew, and he still got both of them too. I bet. I mean, I'm just saying. At the end of the day, so that's why it's called a South Side indictment. I'm not from South Dallas, but I'm from Oak Cliff. So I got I I really get tagged in on the tail end of the indictment. From they was investigating them from 2004 all the way to 2006. Mm -hmm. They didn't have no pictures, no nothing on me. Only thing they had was the last six months of the indictment when Mike Mike came to my house and my relative is the one who served Mike Mike the drugs mm -hmm. first. And they knew where the dope came from because that's my granny house. Damn. So it was it was an automatic knock right there. So it was, they tried to hit, so the first case they came with was aid in the bidding, which that, that don't carry no time but two or three euros. Mm -hmm. That ain't what they want. They, they want. they want your body for some euros so they can get that twenty nine thirty thousand dollars $30,000 off your year in the feds that the taxpayers pay for. That's so it. what did they end up getting you for? Conspiracy. Yeah, you can, mm -hmm. it's hard to get away from that. Yeah, you can't get away from that. And your lawyer couldn't get you out of that No, you can't get it because see, what people feel realize about the feds, they don't got nothing to do with no lawyer. A lawyer can't number represent you. The feds go by guidelines. So if you look at a federal guideline chart, it got months on there. You got offense level from one to forty-four or one to forty-three on this side, and category of criminal history, and it go by how many felonies you get. You get two points or one point, whatever it may be. Mm. So if your level is, say if it's forty-four, and then you get three point four steps to take it back up to forty-one, then you come in if you say you're in category one, which is right here, and they just come down and connect them, mm. and that's how much time you could be facing, Damn. unless, unless, unless. The judge feel that you had a minor participant role or whatever because the judge, judge the judge is the only one that can give you less of time change. that you're supposed to get. But you was but working in the community and doing a lot of stuff for you. They don't care about that. They, they don't care about the community, all the work you do in the community. They 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 want they want the hype of it to say we arrested Bowleg who we've been trying to get for years. This this um one police officer like he harassed me for so long. He tried to plant, they tried to plant drugs on me and everything. And I was like, you know, I beat that charge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of stuff that, that I was beating that the police was trying to do to me. I mean, I beat it. Let me ask him something. When, when you was beating these charges, because I know how the streets be talking, and you be dodging and ducking different situations, did they ever try to say that you was talking? No, nah, they couldn't say that. <coughs> because all my people was always there when, because when, like I jump in the car with her, and they'll pull us over and they ask her, what the drugs at, ma'am? So at one point I was just riding around with different people. I would have different girls to pick me up or different dudes to pick me up. So it wasn't about me talking. How I'm be talking? What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. I'm in the car with her. We going to the movies or something. I have to eat. What drugs you looking for, sir? Yeah, but you I just I just know how how the streets are. Whatever. Nah, nah, that's that's not that's not like you know, um, like at one point they try to uh, they try to put drugs on me, but I had 13 football players in the, in the truck with me from the little league team I was coaching. They didn't know inside the scourging that it was 13 kids in there because I pull up on my grandma's street and it's a red car on that side of the street facing down this way. And I'm going up this way. So I noticed the car on the wrong side of the street. So I pull up on the car to let the one down off in the scourging and see the car, he burn off. So the first thing I'm like, like, damn, who they been watching? Because I've been in football practice with these kids. We went to go watch the Trojans play against the Redskins to see who we was going to play in the first, second round playoffs. So anyway, I followed the man through. I called my home, but I was like, hey, man, it's a red car with tinted windows. He's coming down, down off a bunch of you. Y'all try to cut him off because I'm trying to see who it is. Because somebody already left a note to my grandma house telling my little cousin Freddie that, that they was going to rob me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I got every right in my intentions to see like who is staked out trying to see what's going on. But why would somebody leave a note to warn somebody that them go, they gonna rob you? That don't it's make no sense. Because they on drugs. When person on drugs, they, they the dude was so dumb he left his address on on a letter too. <laughs> and I went. I mean anyway. So back to so I followed all the way through downtown. Um, but when I pull up on the side of him on a one way street, I look down in the I look down from the to the to the front windshield. Of the dude, I see FBI on his shirt. Damn. Biggest mm. date. I'm like, damn. 
So the first thing I do is he run across the light. I make a left. I make a left on a one way street. So it was a police coming. He flashed light. He's like, "Sir, you lost." I'm like, "Yeah." He said, "Well, just go right here and make a left and go on back." So I go drop the kids off at the Salvation Army, which I had two of them left with me because I was gonna go to South Dallas. You know, once I dropped them off, I already be over there. And uh, when I pull down to my grandma's house, the first thing I do, I, I go ask my brother. I was like, "Bro, what y'all been doing?" So at this point, I had probably like uh like eighty, but I probably had like eighty four half of bees, which had about twelve hundred a piece, about ninety six thousand dollars worth. So anyway, I um asked him, I was like, "What to work it?" He was like, "Bro, I sold it out." I said, "Nah, you couldn't have sold it out." I was like, "Bro, what I tell y'all? If I'm in practice, I don't cut away from the kids. Go make no kind of plays. I don't do that at all because those kids are blessing for you, man." You know what I'm saying? And that's something that I never did was cut away from the kids to go make a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I say, man, give me what's left. So he gave me a little canister. He got about like eight half of bigs in it. So as I'm coming out of my brother's house, which my brother's house on the side of my grandma's house, I'm coming down his stairs. Man, I see like four police cars flying down my grandma's street from the top of the head. So I don't I don't go up my grandma uh stairs. I shoot through the driveway. Because if I go up the stairs, then they'll see me going in the house. So I shoot up the driveway. So now they don't they put it, they put it. Kids out the scourge, they putting everybody out. Who driving this truck? And I'm like, damn. So I'm watching them arrest all my cousins them and everything. So I emptied my pockets. I put the money in the couch in my grandma's house. And I come out with my driver's license, $20. They were like, who driving the scourge? And they, they got their guns drive out. I'm like, I was driving the scourge. And I had I had my ID in my hand, but the $20 in my pocket. And uh, he was like, uh, Freeze. I was like, man, I ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? So if you shoot me, I don't got a weapon. I'm, you won't know who's driving. I'm the one that was driving. You got all my people arrested. Y'all look for the driver. I'm the driver. Because now I'm trying to get my people, get the heat yeah, out of my people. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, I give them, I, I give them an idea or whatever. So they send me across the street. When they send me across the street, the scourge in the park on my grandma's side. Um, I'm standing in this girl named Tracy Yoy, Um, But I can see my excursion. So they take a couple of my cousins to jail for tickets or whatever. So now I'm just standing up because I ain't did nothing illegal. Because but like my little quarterback said, he said, Coach, if you was in your impala, you'd have been there caught him. He ought to have been there caught him when we was on the bridge. That excursion was slow. So anyway, I'm standing over there. And uh, this, this this white guy, he pull out a, um, he go in his coat and pull out a bag. I mean, you can see it. Playing this day, powder, playing, playing this day. He whipped out a knife and tried to pop the dashboard up on the scourge and by the stern wheel. To plant it. Yeah, and I was like, hey, man, they trying to plant drugs on me. And so they was like, get him away from me. I was like, nope, I ain't going nowhere. So they was trying to rough me up. I didn't move and then I was like, I'm not finna move because y'all ain't finna do nothing to me. So um, the dude was like, damn. He popped it and he put it back and he walked off. He walked off on the side of one of the houses over there. So um, I, heard, I, I heard these cops talking saying something like, well, he hit, he hit the undercover car. And they don't know I got 13 kids in it, and it's discouraged, so I ain't never hit nobody's car. You see what I'm saying? So if I go to court, I know I got 13 witnesses, and I'm quite sure they go look out for coach anyway, but it's the fact that I didn't hit the car because I got kids with me. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I tell my cousin, just my cousin, I say, uh, her name was Bebe, I said, go in the house and get a camera. It's a disposable camera. Record it. Yeah, uh-uh, take, take pictures. pictures. Because the car was up under the street, like I was like, take pictures of this whole car until the cameras rolled out, and y'all go get the, go get the film developed. They take me to jail, get the pictures to my lawyer. So the whole time they didn't let everybody go. They just got me outside. They got me outside, just standing there. And uh, I look up, and the dude say, "Yo, come walk down this hill with us." I'm like, "Man, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. walk down no hill with y'all. It's like six cops." And, I don't know where these two dudes come from. Mm-hmm. They, they about six, eight, six, nine. Mm-hmm. Big old mother. Hell mother. no. I'm like, man, I'm not finna go down here. So I tell my cousin, I was like, hey, man, make sure they don't try to, I'm gonna go Kill down you. here. So mm-hmm. anyway, I go down there, but they walking in front of me. I'm walking slow because I don't know what they gonna do. You know what I'm saying? And so once I get down there, like, well, we got we're doing a drug investigation over here. Uh, I was like, what they got to do with me? That's the first thing I see. Because you couldn't have been investigating me because I ain't been here all day. But if you've been sitting there all day, I ain't been here all day, so you couldn't have been investigating me. And so the whole time he was like, well, there's some illegal drug activity going on over here. I was like, well, who are you looking for? This is what, this is what I'm asking them now because now I stepped away from them because I don't want nobody trying to grab me or nothing. So I was like, well, who y'all looking for? Well, they was like, well, let's go back to the top of the street. So we go back up there. I was like, well, y'all give me back my driver license because ain't nothing I did wrong. And so some all of a sudden this dude... 
little dude pull up in the car and he said, arrest him. I said, arrest me for what? So they put the handcuffs on me, they take me downtown, they got me, they got me in loose for like five hours. I'm down there without a charge. They didn't tell you what they were arresting you for. No, I'm just down Don't there. Don't they have to I... read you your rights once they put the cuffs on you? Or they have to police, throw it out? The police, the police break rules. They, want, they yeah. make rules and break rules. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like I'm not saying all cops, but they do it. Right. And um the whole time I was down there, so they 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 brought a piece of paper and they were like, Well sign this piece of paper right here. I'm like, what I'm signing a piece of paper for? Y'all signed that paper. I ain't signing nothing. Once I pushed it out the window, like y'all signed it. You know, so what I'm signing it for? Mm -hmm. So I never signed the paper. So I kept calling, kept calling, kept calling, and then all of a sudden, uh, I go to Raymond Court, and then the judge, I'm the last person he called. He said he called my name. He said, "Uh, sir, I don't know what you did to the police department, but whatever you did, they asked me to give you a bond that you can't get out on." I started laughing. Like, I started laughing because it wasn't no bond I couldn't get out on. Like, this was, I didn't say this to him, but I'm like, man, I got a, I got a meal ticket, nigga. I get out on any bond. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, it's $384,000, $387,000, whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. So I go back in, I use the phone, call my chick. I tell her, I was like, man, take my lawyer, 40, 42000 You know what I'm saying? 30, 30 something for the case, you know what I'm saying, for the bond, and 5000 uh for the, for the case, retainer. for the retainer fee. So I was out in four hours, you know what I'm saying? So my lawyer posted the bond for me, whatever, through his bonding company. I get out, I'm sitting on my grandma's, I'm sitting on my grandma's porch. The police come back by my grandma's house the next day, broad day, like, and he was like, motherfucker, how you get out of jail? He went down the street and bagged up. He mad. Yeah, he said, motherfucker, how you get out of jail? I said, bitch, cause I got money. And then my, and then so my grandma was sitting on the porch and he said, uh, he jumped out the car. My granny was like, baby, come up. I'm like, nah, granny, because I had been having dreams about these police and everything. My chick waking me up out of my sleep. You tired of them. You tired yeah. of them. And so I was like, nah, granny, I ain't coming up. There. I, I'm, I, I ain't, I'm not leaving no more. And so he was like, dude, the cop was like, yeah, one day, one day, I'm gonna, one day, I'm gonna put some handcuffs on you and I'm gonna beat your ass. I say, nah, I'm gonna beat your ass before you put the handcuffs on me, because that's just how bad it got. Because I got tired of ducking and dodging them. Being like, harassed, no really. Yeah, I mean, I had got tired of it. Like, anybody come pick me up, they'll, they'll see me in the car with somebody, they'll turn around, put it over. You know you got a known drug dealer in the car with you. Like, they just was burning me up, you know what wow. I'm saying? So, um, 300 and some thousand. Yeah. Okay, so you got right out. They was upset yeah. about it. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't know what I got. Like, y'all don't, like, like that's the one thing that I, I didn't hustle for. But what did they money. charge you with? Oh, they charged me for uh, aggravated assault on a public servant saying I hit the car. And my cousin gave my lawyer the pictures to the car. They dropped the charge. I get out, of, I get out. In the four hours I get out, they dropped the case the next day after my lawyer presented. So in three days, the case gone. The day it happened, next day I get out, the next day it was dropped. So they were playing games. Exactly. But I got a question, because earlier you said you had a lawsuit against the police department and, and all that. And I didn't see the police on my so, street in my neighborhood for two years. I swear to God. They sent for two years. Um, but what was the? But what was okay? So the lawsuit that you had. Tell me about a lawsuit and when. And during all this time, when did the lawsuit start? How did it end? All of that. Well, it never. It, it, it never. I think it was just more of a threat that my lawyer presented the lawsuit to them. Oh, okay, so, so it didn't it really go through as, with yeah, it. Yeah, because it wasn't a start. It was a starting point, but it was never an ending point. But I didn't see them for two years though. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't see them for two years. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, keep going. Yeah. So they, so they just literally bagged away from me, like mm -hmm. hands down. Oh wow. So okay. So after they dropped the case, when is your next time? Because you went to prison for nine years. So how did that happen, and when did that happen? I went to jail in two thousand six on a federal, a federal indictment. That's right. When I got indicted on the federal charge. Okay. So yeah. um. That happened before this or after this? It happened after. This after, happened in 2006. Okay. okay. That case, that case. So tell me about that case. Me, the case they tried to pin me on was the one in 2002 mm -hmm. with the uh, excursion or whatever with the kids right. playing football. That was earlier. Yeah. And then they tried to come back. They come back mm -hmm. with the indictment. That's where the Mike Mike boy get caught up mm -hmm. and he started working for the feds. Right, right, So right. he started working for the feds. Mm -hmm. So when he start, so when he started working for the feds, then he came right back into the clique, just infiltrating the clique. He giving up license plate numbers, what kind of car they were driving. He, I mean, he he had to not, he had the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, so he had the whole nine yards. Like Mike might had everything they needed. 
So mm-hmm. what Mike Mike did was he um, got drugs from one person on this side, one person on this side, and now you're in a conspiracy with somebody that you don't even know. Right. So that's how conspiracy go when two or more conspire to sell illegal drugs. Yeah, I remember. okay, so okay. Hell, what did I, I miss, y'all? I didn't miss something. I nah, went back to that. Okay. She went back to okay. Okay. how did Mike Mike, you know what I'm saying, how did I get a, how did I get arrested with the federal on the get on the federal indictment? Which it was Mike Mike who worked for the Jamaicans. Yeah. They went to bond him out. Um they knew he was working for the feds and didn't tell nobody. He come back into the clique doing the same thing he had been doing, working in houses. He was working uh, the re-up man and doing everything he was doing his normal job you know what I'm saying and it, that's how it, it just came so down. what you telling me is the Jamaicans really was snitching nah I can't I'm not gonna I'm but not one gonna of them. I'm not gonna do that <laughs> nah cause them her people nah, I, I had I'm to not, hear but I'm not gonna do that though but somebody See, was snitching no, Jamaicans this, don't snitch you, I'm telling you it was it was Mike Mike, Mike. Mike. but they knew the Jamaican and somebody else knew that, that he got picked up by the feds and they just didn't tell. And they didn't tell nobody. Right. That's like me sitting right here and let, let you go across the street and, and buy some wheels more than knowing they the feds. Yeah. And I know it. That's crazy. That's yeah. it. That's the kind of stuff they do, though. Don't be trying uh, to put uh, this all yeah, on my yeah, I'm, 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 I'm about to be going over there, there too. Hey, I'm going wanna, over there in two weeks. Hey, I don't want to be in y'all personal. <laughs> <bro. laughs> I'm not messing with you, man. I don't want to taking none of that. But I'll just make it ain't messed up. No, man. I've been with the Jamaicans for a long time, bro. My homeboy, Pell, that's my partner, man. Hey, what up, Pell? Yeah, yeah, my partner Pierre. So you know, let's let's get. I want to roll into the music a little bit because we've been man, we was in the streets for a minute, huh? Yes, yeah. it was. Um, the streets ain't nothing. That's that, that, that's, that, that's, that's something streets. that we. That's the beginning. Yeah, that's, that's the beginning. A lot of brothers now, go through that. Man, beginning playing football, then into the streets, mm-hmm. then into the music while I was in the streets at the same time, yeah. and playing some of my pro football. Yeah, you was doing all of that. I was doing all of it at the same time. You did a lot of stuff with Gator Man, didn't you? Yeah, that's my. That's not. I did a lot of stuff with Gator Man. It seemed like y'all had. He was. He, because he's one of the people that I, when I wasn't rapping at first, I was just CEO. Okay. I had my own, see, Gator Rap for Eternal Life. And I, I had my own my own record label, Stampede Record. So at the end of the day, we are, our studios was around the corner from each other. So um, one day they had, they, uh, um, CEO Worm, Thurman Patterson, he was out from there. They, I think they had wrote something for him or whatnot, whatever. And then he was, uh, he was, uh, they, they put a beat on and then everybody was rapping. So I'm sitting over there, my home was, my artist looking at me like, what you gonna do? I'm like, nigga, I ain't no rapper. But then they don't know I had start practicing, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm go, when they come back around next time, I'm gonna be ready for this shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, so when they came back around, I started freestyling. So they was like, oh, he been practicing somewhere. But Gator is one of the people that, Gator, Kool-Aid, uh, Lil Joe, that whole eternal life, uh, even the artist, uh, uh, Bobo, uh, Ro P, the artists on Stampede, like, it's artists, I used to just stand back in the crowd and look at them, how they work the stage and how they rap, whatever, it's like, you know, I'm like, damn, you know. So it came, like I said, it came around to the point to where um, we come out with the double compilation first. Uh, it was called Our Time to Shine, where, where we took all the songs that everybody on Stampede had, and we made the double disc on it. It's a platinum and gold disc. And then they come back to uh, me working on my solo project, and that's where I, that's where it come in uh, with Gator in the first place because he actually taught me how to write music. You feel wow. what I'm saying? He taught me that now you can't say this, you gotta you can't you saying it backwards or you or you writing it backwards or you doing now it has to go like this. So I mean I give him credit to how he you know taught me how to write music and even steer me in the right direction by not letting me say stuff. It it, it could be times where. Uh, I'm sitting in the car or whatever, you know what I'm saying? We collaborating on something, and he'll be like, we get to the studio, he'll say, I say the whole verse all the way through, I say the wrong, the last word wrong, he'll make me do the whole thing over, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's so a he really, Yeah, so he really critiqued me and taught me how, you know what I'm saying, you know, how to go about, you know, with the music or whatnot. Wow, I wanna ask you about the uh, I Got Money, like, like when you first done that, what was, how did, how did that even come about? We was just, we was uh we, me, Gator, and some more of us in the studio. Just we was just shooting the shit, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And it was just a question being asked, like, well, how you do such and such? I got money. How you do such and such? I got money. And it's just how it came about. You know what I'm saying? It was just it was a fun song from the get go. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even a song that we even looked at to be the one that that, that was gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? How did it, how did it start off? Give me. You know, I always like to hear the song. So I what man? I, I got money. Yeah. I got clothes. Hmm. I got bitches. I got hoes. Man. <laughs> I got brand new Vogue's. <laughs> still got the sticker. Bought a brand new Rolly. Threw away my ticker. Yeah. Yeah. 
Man, yeah. Yes, you're a music head, man. No, I just like the music. You're a music you know, I'm be honest yeah. with you. And not only just yeah. me, my fans, a lot. I mean, my, my people that watch and subscribe, we all do. We just love the music yeah. because that's really what keep everything. You know, really, it neutralizes things. It can make things. You remember when the when the when that music came out when Lil John then was in the club and that 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 crunk music came yeah. out. You know, music does something. I remember I had my boy Fresh on here and he was talking about how the club was going crazy mm -hmm. and, and you know, go DJ Fresh. Yeah. And uh, he said he played a certain song to stop them from, you know, even having that type of feel. You know, music is just an extraordinary piece, bro. Yeah, that's how, I mean, yeah, no doubt. But that's, yeah. how, that's how the song actually came about, though, you know. And, I mean, I actually had money, though. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't one of the dudes that was fabricating or... No, uh, come up a little bit for the it, mic. It's, it's not one, of, I'm not one of the dudes who be out here, you know, rapping and saying, you know, you got such and such and I don't got it. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, uh, I had some partners out of North Dallas. Uh, Power Move Records, uh, my partner Ro. Um, he was like, uh, one day he asked me, uh, he was like, bro, how you how you do everything that you do? You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was in my grandma's house. We were talking about music and stuff and whatever. And I was like, I'll be back in my grandma's house. So I go I go put out this long army duffel bag, one of them long green duffel bags. And I just dumped all the money on the couch. She was like, man, how much money you got right there? I was like, man, that's a meal ticket, bro. He was like, what? I was like, this is how I do everything, bro. I got money for real, bro. Like, people don't know I got money like this, but I really got money. You know what I'm saying? That's how I Yeah, so I was like, man, you know, the most I ever had was one million, two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars cash, and I ain't never owed a nigga nothing. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I was able to, you know, uh, be able to do a lot of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I mean, I had the money to do it. Who always on, like, Stampede, like, who, like, I think about Corey Cloud and all those nah, guys. Corey, like, nah, was y'all nah, y'all ever work together? Cause this nah, music. all of us was in the same era though. Like, okay. you got Cloud Records, um, Eternal Life, Mill Tiki Riders, uh, Rally Boys, Rally Grifter. Yeah, Grifter, um, P.O.B. Pissed Off and Broke. Yeah. Uh, man, you had uh, uh, what's my boy in them name or uh, Dub them over there, Dub and Cab them or uh. uh Man, I can't believe I can't think of these boys' names. You had the Inset Boys, you had uh, Jaws, uh, you had Paul. But Fort Worth of... doing anything back then? Like, it wasn't as much as it is now. Like, Fort Worth got Fort Worth. Like, yeah, it was Twisted Black. Just they Twisted had, Black. Yeah, Twisted Black and all. Uh, and was anybody else? Uh, What's what's his DJ name? Uh, Wild Her. Wild Her. Yeah, DJ Wild Her. He been, he been out there. Shout out DJ Wild That's you my know, boy. He a good dude, man. He been, I rock with he, been out, he been out there for a while, too. Um, like yeah, you, I mean it was a lot of it was a lot of record labels uh, at, at the time of the era that we all was at. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody, everybody had some. You know what I'm saying? Like you had uh, like still you got uh, like I said the Rally Boys. Um, I mean who else? You can name a slew of people that was really had some good music, man. It's just they couldn't we couldn't get on DSR. How, how was your, yeah DSR of course? But how was your music like when you end up getting locked up? How where was your music at the, at that time like? How, how was it? Was it were you on? You had some popping in the streets when you end up having to go well, sit yeah, down. That's when I had just uh, that that Oak Cliff. Well, you know, I had I did. I got money first from two thousand three. You know, it's still rock today. And then after that, uh, which the project came out two thousand three, but um, you know that joke would last me about two years flat on the radio, hot. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying. And then we came back with the Oak Cliff, that's my hood, in the same instance of the two years from 2005, roll on over to, you know what I'm saying, 2006 or whatever. But um, at the same time, I was about to think a deal with Universal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's good. I, I mean, I was already, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, the feds grabbed me. they like, what you was going to do with that money from the, you know what I'm saying, from the deal? It's just they try to, you know what I'm saying? The feds, their job is to make you a, make you a monster, man, even though you may not even be that monster, you know what I'm saying? They 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 they'll make it to where you uh, what what they try to figure out if you don't you know, you know how much power you got to get people killed or knocked off or they hear stories about you, then that's what they believe. See, on the cool to feed some sorry motherfuckers. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I don't think they do is sit back and wait for a motherfucker to tell them something instead of getting off their ass doing investigating. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then once they do luck up and grab a motherfucker, you in the feds. Niggas will come out of anywhere to testify on you to go home. So what you think you go do? That's real. See, all these niggas be talking about they tough. Nah, I ain't copping that, nigga. You copping that, nigga? Cause yeah. you ain't finna sit up in that bitch and get thirty when you don't gotta get thirty. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So you sit up in that bitch and get thirty cause you tough. Nah, I mean, I don't get whatever you go get and get on out the way. 
Mm-hmm. Because if not, you gonna get up and up with a way out. By the time you get by the time you get all your your shit reversed, you done done twenty five years on the thirty. That's real. That's come real. Come on, man. So I mean, I wasn't no fool. I mean, I had a whole I had a whole witness see the motherfucker who come testify on me. And I'm telling the DA, I'm like, y'all gotta be some sorry motherfuckers to sit up here and know if I got a song saying I got money, I got weed and crack. Every motherfucker gonna say they bought dope for me. I done, I done, I done did, I done did on five hundred shows. I done been on a million posters. I done shit been on the radio all over the place. Don't you think anybody gonna say they know me when they only know of me? Man. They only heard of me. Well, tell me, I, I, I'm gonna ask you this: like Greg Street, like during that time he was in the city, like how you, how did you and him meet, and and how was he when your music was moving? Man, Greg Street, the real one though, on the cool, like Greg Street, the real. When I took that, I got money to him. Uh, well, we. First of all, we went to K104 to do an interview on this, uh, on uh, Our Time to Shine. And everybody was at the video, we was having a blast. And um, I mean, I was sitting back like I always do, just letting everybody have their fun. And uh, Greg Street was like, man, let me, you know, he's like, man, let me, uh, he said, man, let me tell you something. I was like, what? He said, first thing I want to tell you is, uh, this is rapper dude coming out of, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, named Young Jeezy. Uh, man, give me 3500 get a verse from him. And I was like, man, fuck Jeezy. I don't know who that nigga is. Like, nigga, I'm trying to get him some money. I ain't trying to give my money away. Damn, so you didn't, you didn't, and you can't blame him because he didn't have nothing at that time. He might have nah, had that. But, but you don't know if, but but by, by Greg Street being a DJ, he can he, hear something. He can hear something, but not only that though, Greg Street probably breaking the nigga records too. Who knows? That's you feel what I'm saying? Because you in Atlanta, you feel what I'm saying? But I wasn't looking at it from that perspective. I'm looking at it like, I don't need this nigga, you feel what I'm saying? But later on, that motherfucker could have, that verse or two could have gave me longevity to put out another hit song or one or two, you feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, real talk. I got money, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, or they could have been on that same album, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, and so the second thing he told me, he said, bro, you wasting a lot of money on all these artists to make the world know who they is, like, bro, People, you gonna spend more money trying to make them known than anything. He was like, I'm gonna give you an example. He said, everybody know you. The streets know you, dope boys, the girls, the community, everybody, you in the schools, everybody know you, bro. It's easy for you to drop an album, so why you wanna drop an album? And I was like, shit, nigga, I ain't just, I, I didn't feel like I was just the best rapper on the label. You know what I'm saying? But now I realize you don't have to be the best rapper. You gotta be more to be, be the most likable nigga on your label. That's real. See, you know what I'm That's saying? That's real. Fuck the best rapper. You gotta be the most likable nigga. And you the most likable nigga, you go get away with something. You know what I'm saying? So I took I took heed of what he was saying and I instantly started working on my solo project, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't actually put nobody else project on freeze, you know what I'm saying? I just went directly working on mine. You know what I'm saying? What were the club during that time? Was it was it was that that's Bay Bay time, like the strip clubs, the spot? What, nah, what club? Yeah, we, we had Club Diamonds. Diamonds. Uh, GG. GG. Uh, GG Park for Avenue, sure. Park Avenue. Jamie's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had all of uh, them. R.J. by the lake, that was a little bit nah, before that. Way, way that way before that. Before we before had that. Club Blue. Club Blue. Yeah, we had everything. Yeah, I, I think that's that's just sets the time of yeah. where, you know, where everything was at during yeah, the time. we had everything. That's hard, man. Like, and so. And we, street, but that's, I'm going to tell you what Street did, though. Street motherfucker, he don't give a damn what the radio people say at some point. That motherfucker played I Got Money for the top 88. He played that bitch eight times. Damn, but that's love. <laughs> See, do you, do, they, do you think they get love like that now around the city yeah. like that? No, nah, I'm not saying they get love like that because it's easier now. Okay. It's easier now. You don't even need the radio now. Yeah, but a lot of people still utilize it. Because you know why, though? Why? Because it's still an avenue that you need. Meaning, people gonna be like, Oh, I heard that on the radio. The radio will make you like a motherfucking song that don't even sound good. <laughs> I for know playing I didn't it so need much. It before, man. For, do you find yourself singing the fucking song? Yes, sir. So, so the radio player, 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 it play a, it play a, it play a role. Too, Real significant it? role. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really does. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying the outlets now. We got so much social media. This is me, how I look at it. So I'm working on a project. Use the old tactic and the new tactic. And just go ahead on and put her album out. I'm, I'm going to win regardless. Yeah. Because I'm not going to get away from nowadays. A lot of artists lazy because they don't get up and they don't got to move around no more because there's so much social media and technology. They don't got to move around. Nah, I'm going to be still hitting the road, still hitting the streets, still popping up, doing my shit. The same way I've done before. So I can't lose. Well, like, let me ask you, like, when you got, when you came home, how was it transitioning back into society and just trying to get things back rolling just for a guy that might be getting out? 
coming uh, up? I mean, actually, I worked on myself while I was locked up. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. You know what I'm saying? Meaning that, um, I mean, I'm not a perfect person, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I'm more considerate now of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? How they may see a situation. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to hold myself accountable. Just a little bit. I'm going to hold myself accountable. I'm going to hold myself accountable for the things that I do. Yes, sir. Or the things I don't do. You know what I'm saying? First and foremost. But also, I'm, I used to take the blame for everything that go wrong between me and somebody. Mm -hmm. But I had to realize that that somebody did something wrong, too. You know what I'm saying? But do they do they hold themselves accountable or accept that they being wrong in the instance that I had to accept it? You know what I'm saying? And know yeah. that I did wrong. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I became with the, you know, like the growth of everything because I had to look at it like, man, this shit just don't work your way. You can't just see it your way. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that my way may not be the best way. Listen to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, you can be sitting here talking. And I could be like, man, my head, I'd be like, man, if he don't shut the fuck up and just don't let me go. But it came to a point, like, when I got out, I actually had to be like, okay, man, listen to what he got to say. You know what I'm saying? He might be on to something, Lig, you don't know everything. So that was the point that I became, it was one of the things that I worked on, you know what I'm saying? Because that's something that people need to do because a lot of people, they be, uh, what they call it, uh, they have tonal vision, you know what I'm saying? Because they only see stuff for how they see it and how they want it to be. But it's not always like that, you know what I'm saying? But you became aware of your um, faults because people would tell it to you? No, because I understood it myself. So you just figured it out by yourself? Yeah, I figured it out myself. Some people because some can't. I, be, I mean, I, because I had already figured it out myself because I was already working on myself before I went to federal prison because I was like, okay, you got to stop fucking with all these women. You know what I'm saying? You got to stop dealing with all these niggas. You got to stop doing X, Y, and Z. I was already figuring that out. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't used to spend a lot of time with my kids because I was so deep in the streets. You know what, what I'm saying? Real. So I was always, so my, my, my kid mom be like, um, well, we want to go to Six Flags. I'm like, all right, here go $600, y'all gonna go to Six Flags. Here go $700, y'all go. Or they need, need new this and that, hurt. Here go the money, y'all do what y'all gotta do. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I start realizing the time is more important than, than money. your money. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Because I start realizing that if I have $1, I'm still a daddy. If I have a million dollars, I'm still a daddy. So you gotta, you know, cut this shit and start going spend time with your kids. And at that point, like the one time I, I end up going to Six Flags with my, uh, uh, you know, at the time, with my oldest son and my third oldest son and my daughter, well, Shandria. So we had Six Flags or whatever. I mean, I'm enjoying it, whatever. And we got so many, because my little son, he could shoot basketball, his mom can shoot. I can shoot a little bit. And uh, we got bags of uh, uh, stuffed animals and basketballs. Like we got like four or five of them dragging around Six Flags. And I tell my son, I say, you see the kid in the wheelchair, uh, go give him a bag. He like, no, nah, dad, I ain't giving him a bag. Son, go give him a bag. I said, let me explain why to you. He handicapped, he'll never be able to shoot a basketball. Mm -hmm. They get him in a wheelchair. So give him a bag. I said, Junior, look how much you got. So he went over there and took a bag. He was crying, but he come back. He was like, okay, dad, I get it. He, he can't do nothing. He can't even move on his own. I was like, this is right. And I said, one day, you better come. I said, you come to Six Flags tomorrow. His people might ain't better come to Six Flags tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They don't got they might have the money to go. When you, when you left to go, to the feds, you, was how old was your kid? Eight, eight and under. So, so when you came back, was 16, 17. 17. Yeah, my oldest and my son was, I got to watch him graduate. Wow, that be Because I was at the halfway house, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, which I worked at the daycare uh, with my bro, him and his sister, uh, my partner, uh, Big B, uh, uh, Brandon Stevenson, and uh, uh, his his uh, his kid mama, Crystal, at the time, where, well, at the daycare at the time, and um, I was supposed to be on the bus going back to the halfway house. And I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm going to go watch my son graduate. That's if real. they want to send me back, fuck it. They can just send me yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, if I be an hour and a half, two hours late, fuck it, just send me back. I ain't running. So I I messed around and uh, well, I went to my son's graduation. And I see, he came out of there. I was right there. He was happy to see me. I was happy to see him. Wow, that's, that's so, big. Yeah, so I was like, shit, oh, I'm, I'm going to see my little nigga graduate. Yeah, fuck out of there. So I stayed and watched them graduate. I got back to the halfway house. They made me take a UA, asked me a lot of questions. I'm like, man, y'all, I'm here. So if y'all want to send me back, whatever, send me back. They were like, nah, we ain't gonna send you back. And I was like, well, all right, well, let it go then. You know what I'm saying? I just want to see my son graduate. And then after that, like, um, I went on home confinement and shit or whatever. So at this point in time, my my uh, one of my, my second son, my third son, he playing football. Him and my second son playing football at Skyline. And, um, I used to just watch his huddle, you know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't go out because I was on home confinement or whatever. And then I was like, you know, fuck it, man. Let's, you know, 
I, I mean, I wrote that shit out. I wrote my five years on federal papers out. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I kept my nose clean and everything. I stayed away from everybody. I didn't see, I didn't see no weed, no dope. I didn't see nothing. I didn't see nobody. I didn't give a damn. I just wanted to, you know, take care of my business and, you know, you know, walk a straight line, man. Yes, you know, did you ever talk to your kids, as in asking them how did it affect them? You being know, gone, I already know how to affect them. I knew the day the, when the feds grabbed the feds arrested me. It's on one word that came out my mouth. Right. Well, two, three. I said, "Damn, my kids." Because when, you know what comes to my mind is the fact that when you were driving down the street with your son, as you said, and you looked over to Seagullville and you said, "I'm gonna be there one day." It's crazy. It's a funny story. Not a funny story, but it's a crazy turn. So my son, well, he played for the Cummins just like I coached the Cummins. And my son, no, if I'm out of town doing a show, I don't care. I'm coming back. I'm going to make it to my son's game. And I didn't make it to my son's game. And I, I had called his mom, whatever, and I talked to him. I was like, hey, man, go out there and be a leader because he played quarterback. I was like, they go far as you go. You know, don't fumble the ball. Do everything you're supposed to do. Don't bother with the ball. You get the ball and run. Win the game, son. Like, by all means, you win the game. And, um. The next day was Sunday. She brought him to see me or whatever. And then he had my stampede chain on. He was like, uh, Dad, I already knew where you was at because you don't miss my game. I knew you was right here. He, he already knew. Up. He already knew. You know what I'm saying? But I knew it was going to affect them instantly because, um, not saying my kid moms wasn't, wasn't handling their business, but life changed when you go for having everything. To Could not, not know what's gonna have next, what's gonna happen next from from birthday parties to Christmas school clothes and you know they didn't have regular parties they had bounce houses, dunking booths and cotton candy machines they had the whole nine yards but at the end of the day the important piece was missing me being away which is you that's real you know what I'm saying so I already knew that it was gonna affect my oldest son real bad yeah because he knows and I knew it was gonna affect one of my other sons bad you know what I'm saying and the crazy part about it both of them left handed. And it affect both of them the same way because at the end of the day, a kid will say, you know, when their mama started dating somebody else because I was I was me, I told his mom like I said, hey look, um, these people give me some time. Don't put your life on pause for me. Hey, be safe out here. You get you a dude, whatever, however. Just be careful because dudes don't take stuff the same way that women do, and women don't take stuff the same way dudes mm -hmm. do. Be careful in these streets. I wouldn't. Big and pleading, asking her to wait for me or nobody to wait for me, whatever. Bro, you're doing time. You can't do nothing for nobody, and the clock will keep on turning. That's you real, know what I'm saying? That's real so, talk. Man. So that's what I did do, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I know if the if the parents are right, then the kids going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, did you cry many nights in prison because of that? Uh, nah, I, I, actually, I, actually, I actually didn't cry nothing but one night. You know what I'm saying? Because I heard the way that my son was struggling, yeah. trying to talk to me, and he don't struggle to talk to me. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, it, it fucked with me real bad because I know he need me. You know what I'm saying? And I couldn't be there for him. That, that's a cleansing time, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's so, a time that cleans you up. That's, yeah, so that's, it's like when me coming back, me coming back, trying to learn each and every last one of them all over again, mm -hmm. the new attitudes and trying to build a relationship with them to get them to understand, like, you know, I'm here. You need me. Let me help keep you some game on no, being a young man and what you can't do and what you can do because my daddy was telling me you can't have two, three girlfriends and you can't do this. I don't want either. That's what I'm saying. So I was one of my sons ended up having both his little girlfriends at the house while his mom was at work. I'm like, hey man, you can't do that. And they all are getting into it at the house. You can't do that, son. You know what I'm saying? But you know he understood. But that same son of mine, he graduated from uh, Grambling with his master's and bachelor's degree. Mm. And then he got a job at Baylor University. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, he's the, uh, actually the um, the women's basketball. Uh, he do stuff for them or whatnot or whatever. That's but, hard. Uh, the associate marketing or whatever. So, you know, he turned out, you know, he turned out pretty stiff or whatever. You know? I want to um, just ask you about, give back to the music a little bit. Like, top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Top three. Pop. And number one? And genre. <laughs> in the jump, she gonna say that. In the genre. Nah, you, you did. You <laughs> Pop. Uh, Number two. Scarface. That's big. Number three. Pog Scarface. It ain't a certain order. Pog Scarface. Fuck Scarface first, Pog. Uh, Number three is always the hardest. 
Fuck it myself. Nah, that's hard. See. I like it. No, no, <laughs> nah, hell no. Nah. Do your thing. Now nah, let me see. Uh, what you asked me like for real? Let me see if he gonna say it. Scarface, Pot, Rick Ross hard to me. You like Rick Ross? Ross hard to me. Ross just like my stuff the other day. Hopefully I can get him like, on the show. Ross hard. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. That nigga hard. Like, <laughs> for real, for real. If you just sit down and listen to Ross, he hard as fuck. Like, for real. Man. I, you like I, Ross better than Pimp C? Nah, it's not. A, it's, it's, it's a pimp and bun. Mm. When you when you go talk about UGK, you're going to talk about both of them. You know, you're not going to talk about bun. You're going to talk about UGK. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. I love everything down south. I gave you Scarface already, so <laughs> I don't want to stay on that note. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I booked Pimp and Bone for a show before. You know what I'm saying? How but, was it dealing with Pimp? You know how Pimp is, man. You know, you know, shit, Pimp, pimp the one go smell some bullshit for some bullshit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, uh, I mean, I love for, you know, don't get me wrong for UGK. You know what I'm saying? But. Um, you can just want them trill burgers yet? He just nah, opened up. Nah, I ain't, nah, I ain't I'm gonna head down there and get me one when I get back from out of the country. Yeah, nah, man. I mean, For don't real. get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I fool with him though. You know, I what love him, like, man. Love UGK yeah, I mean, I love Texas, UGK. man. Like, ain't no way, ain't no way. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no way that you, you know, you. It ain't a top three gonna be the hardest top three that you could ever come up with to pick. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's and you know I've been around. You know I've been around, I done heard music for years. I gotta ask you though, like like when you hear people talk about the greats, you know, they it, they always shun the South, you know, uh, the album that you can go through and never skip a song. We know Riding Dirty is one of them type album. We know I, I'm gonna even give uh, Big Mike back in the day, yeah, Big Mike, right. Big Mike, you can go through that whole that we did the whole sum on that. Yeah, you know you, what I'm saying? Yeah, you can, do, you can do some Big Mike. You can do, yeah, uh, like. You got just still balling them, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? Like, and and then your your boy yeah. outcasting them too. Yeah, they they had some a, a nice run. It's a, it's a whole lot of, but they don't get mentioned. They and, don't, and that's why I mention them because, every time. Because you know why though? See, this, see, this is why I be trying to tell people about artists. You know what I'm saying? Like they uh, <clears throat> they um, what's the actual word I used earlier? Uh, they image. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you go to looking at uh, like you saying uh uh. Akez, Akez got a whole different image from A by M J G. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody have a different image. Like to uphold when you talking about Pimp and Bun. You know what I'm saying? They image different. Look at the image of Pimp and Bun. Look at Pimp himself. Pimp go stay fly in the motherfucker. That's his image. And he go talk shit at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So look at his image. If if Pimp talk that shit and then uphold that image, nigga think Pimp a pee on. <laughs> you right So I mean that's what people look at though Man you know what I'm saying they, they, You know your image you gotta uphold Man so man Hey man how can people get a hold to you If they trying to reach out And also let me go back to the To the little league football I don't want to leave without talking about the kids Like you have been still consistently uh, Playing part in that When you came home How how was it getting back into it It was easy to get back to it Because we always had our own team And our own field to see the Chris okay. Cummings it was just, you know, at the point of me coaching or not. And the next year I come in and coach. How did you feel about it? I feel great. Well, when I first got home, I was, before I got home, I was a little bit rattled because yeah. um, our community center, people had broke up away from it. You know what I mean? Because whatever happened, it happened. But um, at the same time, everybody agreed to come back. Um, once I got there, everybody came back and dudes talked and hashed it out, whatever it may be. And you look up, you got 300 kids on the football field and sending five cheerleaders or whatever it may be. Um, then they uh, kicked us out the building. They, they was going to sell the building and make it a low-income housing. They were tear it down. But I went to the media. I talked to everybody except the chief of police and the president trying to save the building and whatnot, whatever. So it came around it. Um, uh, behind every door has recouped the building. Uh, where they they got the building that they done uh, raised twelve million. You know, I gave them a story. It's not a story, but it was my life. How the Salvation Army helped me and helped plenty more of us that came through there. Because you got guys like, like I said, my brother got drafted. Eric Harris got drafted. Uh, Kenya Morton got drafted from there. Uh, and Steve uh, Steve Paris got drafted from there. We got a lot of dudes that you came. Ever, you ever, you ever run through Coach Prime team, his, his little league team? Nah, you ever Coach get played him? No. Nah, um, Cause they didn't play, they didn't. Nah, didn't we, uh, you we know, played, I'm we, talking about the little league. Yeah, when he was dealing with that. Yeah, yeah. We ended up playing them one year or whatever, but um, we never played against Dion team to be exact. 
know okay. what I mean? The team that he coached. So, um, but they um, did. A, he does it. him and I have to mention him and Snoop because they they they, they yeah. Have, like they I, have I, like I tell you, back like my first time, one of my first years uh, coaching in Florida, we end up playing against. Uh, I played against Snoop and uh, Uncle Luke one eighteen. Oh yeah, and Snoop <laughs> Snoop actually told me, youngster, he said I fly in three hundred fifty kids to a camp. I take the best thirty five. So it's gonna be hard to beat that thirty five because he get the top of the top. Yeah. When we come from a little rec team and, and, and they're showing that we coaching these kids and, and, and we're giving them development they need to get to where they're going, not because they they, they they got the juice, but this is what we take you through. You know what I'm saying? So every year we go deep in the playoffs anyway, even if we don't win it, but it comes from coaching. You know what I'm saying? So um, It's hard, man. Yeah, it's real Thank hard. you, man, uh, for even doing that, man, spending yeah. time with them kids. Is I, mean, so it's, important. It's, I mean, it's, real, it's, it's, it's like it's real important, but in, they, try, they try to sell a building or kick us out. They raised twelve million, got the builder back. We got they giving us turf football field, turf baseball. Dallas Mavericks doing a horrible basketball flow. We got to have a golf simulator in there. The, the, I think his name is George Spieth, the guy, the golf guy, uh, helped with the simulator. Curry Clay Shaw helped with baseball. Uh, Avery Johnson. It's a lot more people wow. who are taking out. I, I gotta ask you this too now because you even that like when 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 the guy got killed on the field. Yeah, Mike. Oh, Higgins. Yeah, like like you. What did you think about that when you when you when it happened? Because I know that the chemistry, because one of the guys that's here with me, uh, been here with me ever since he was this big. Like he coaches, and and I always tell him like they be too serious. Coaching? They be why do he coach? Well, it's, it's not that big. It's, it's it's not huh? And his name Quan Jackson. It's not that they be too serious. I mean, I take coaching serious, but I'm not finna be in no football field with no guns. No, you know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing. There's nothing that happened that bad on the football field to make you bring a gun. To own a football field wow. around kids, anyway. Yeah, that was crazy. But but the but the the I mean that was a big blow for the little league community. Because, yeah, it was because people pulled their kids away from a lot of football teams and didn't want their kids mm -hmm. out there because of the safety. That's right. That's right. And, Even I mean, I the kids who it. had to experience seeing that they though. traumatized. They yeah, traumatized. that's crazy. Yeah, so um, I mean, like with them redoing our building, I mean, I'm I'm gonna have a zero tolerance this year. Uh, you, you, I'm gonna have the police at the game. You, you, you call me a whole ass nigga. What you want to call me? But you going to jail and see the Chris, bro? I'm not go. Man, my people go. My kids, people man. gonna be safe when you come over there and play and see the Chris. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Indeed. you know, it's just, it, man, it's just a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, last six years, I actually last five years, brother, I actually uh, you know, got the nonprofit, uh, the team under my name, and That's the, the nonprofit paperwork is all there, everything through the treasurer's state. We got everything we need, just, you know, more about again sponsorship or whatnot or whatever. But, um, you know, I mean, I love doing this. It's the number one reason why I do it. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Uh, it's not about the money or what come through and what don't come through. Because when the money ain't there, then somebody got to pay it. So who pocket got to come out of mine some type of way? But that's not what it's about. It's about the same place that saved me. I can save somebody else. So that's why I come out be, you know, I'm. that's why I'm on City Chris. So, oh. Man, well, thank you, man. We appreciate you for coming on the show, man. Hey, I appreciate your time, man. man. Come on, man. We're going to keep on doing this till we get it right. Nah, but, man, get it right. man, I just appreciate you, man. I say, man, um, just thank you, man, for the, the contribution to the community like you be doing, man. Um, I know we'll link back up. Maybe we'll pull up one day and do something. Mm -hmm. You know, our grandkids, my grandkids, be yeah, they play. I mean, our just, grandkids. I, I, I mean, I'll tell, you, <laughs> I might tell you what, man. Just, you know, maybe one day just spend by practice or something and see how it goes. Check go, it man. out. Yeah, just check it out, man. You know, I mean, you know, it's just. Just different oh. environments with for different well, people. Well, thank man. you, Bolivia, for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, appreciate you. Any questions you want to ask me before I go? I don't think so. I don't, Is there I, anything I that we left out? Nah, I mean, I'm just I had a good conversation, nah, man. I mean, I'm like asking y'all because it's, it's y'all job to ask me questions. Nah, we good, man. We had a good time. And what, what was supposed to happen was already ordained and happened, man. I thank they God for it. can always be the part two. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And we out. Man. What a boss.